Hi guys, welcome to Iquanta. This is like the third part of TSD. We have already discussed something which is very important like the average, like the proportionality and the basic things. But today we will do in the third part like more like a lot of questions as well as something about average speed also will start. But remember one thing, if you have not subscribed us yet, please subscribe us, please like and comment. So that will give us motivation to create some this kind of more videos and that will obviously be beneficial to you. So let's begin with this third part. And so we start with the question, obviously, the question is after traveling for 90 minutes, a train developed a technical problem. As a result, its speed was reduced by 25% and it reached its destination an hour and 15 minutes late. Had the problem developed after 90 kilometers more, the train would have been 45 minutes early. So to solve this type of question, you need to do one thing. That is the first thing you need to remember. So let's say this is like the path and I'm just using another color to describe another path, let's say. So make it white as well. So this is another path. So let's say uh, the train is starting from here, like both case, initially it has been uh, like, there is the accident place. And in the second hypothetical scenario, the accident place is, let's say this. So what I can say initially, initially if I can say the train is moving at the speed S kilometers per hour, right? Then the accident happened. After 90 minutes, the train developed a technical problem. As a result, its speed was become reduced by 25%. So it is reduced by 25%. What is 25%? That is S by 4. So S was the initial speed reduced by S by 4. It becomes 3S upon 4. So if it is 3S upon 4, so now he started his journey in 3S upon 4 and he carry on this journey in 3S upon 4 also. Right? But if in the hypothetical situation, let's say if it is happened 90 km more. So now this is the point A where it actually happened. This is the point B where it has actually Hypothetically, it would have happened in point B, let's say, and which is 90 km from A. So in this case, this distance would have been covered in S km per hour. This distance also would have been covered in S km per hour. But this distance after accident would have been covered in 3S upon 4. So I can see one thing very clearly. So this distance is same, the speed is same. So there is no time difference. Here also the distance is same and the speed in both cases is same. So there is no time difference. If the distance is same and the speed is same, there is no time difference, right? So the only time difference which happened, it's here only. So this is the only place where the train reduced speed in the first case. In the second case, it has not reduced speed. So the time difference, which is the 45 minutes is due to only this place. So what I can say, this place is 90 kilometers, this distance. So in the initial case, the time taken to cover this 90 km distance is 90 upon 3s upon 4. And in the second case, this distance is covered in s km per hour. So the time taken is 90 upon s because d equal to st. So what is time? d upon s. So d is 90, s is 3s upon 4. d is 90, s is s. Now the difference of this time period is nothing but 45 minutes because this is 45 minutes given here, right? Now 45 minutes, if I convert into hour, that is 45 upon 60. So this is my equation which has become. Now remember one thing, if I get this equation, now it's a cakewalk to solve this question. Now how can I solve this question? Just check this one. So this is, uh, this is 90 upon s, this is upper 4, 3, that is 120 upon s minus 90 upon s is equal to 45 by 60, which is nothing but 3 by 4. So I can easily say 30 upon s is 3 upon 4. So what is s? So S is 30 into 4 by 3, which is nothing but 40. So what is the usual speed of the train? That is 40 kilometers per hour. So you understand how easily you can solve this question if you draw a diagram. So if you draw the diagram, you understand exactly what is happening in which place and you can directly solve this question just by using this concept. So this is all about this question. So in the next question, we will also discuss some this kind of concept only. So let's go for the next one. Now see this question, so you can see this is a train question obviously at 12.30 p.m. the engine of a train was exactly midway of a tunnel which is thrice as long as the train. It completely emerged from the tunnel after 25 seconds. How much time will the train make to completely cross a tunnel which is four times as long as the previous tunnel? Now in this thing you need to understand one thing, very important. So let's say this is a tunnel. So this is a tunnel let's say. So I know it looks like a pipe but just consider it as a tunnel. Right. Now it is said that at 12.30 p.m. the engine of a train was exactly midway of a tunnel. So let's say here is the engine. And the train is here, let's say. This is the midway. Right. And let's say, and um, which is thrice as long as the train. So let's say this is uh, 2 meter is the train. So this entire thing is 6 meters. So this entire thing is 6 meter. 
So this has to be 3 meters. Now the, when the train has to cross the tunnel, the train has to be here. When the train has to cross the tunnel, the train has to be here. That means the train has to cover this portion that is 3 meters and the train has to cover its own length which is 2 meter. So the distance the train has to travel to cross the tunnel from midpoint is 5 meters only. That is understood first one. Now the question is how much time will the train take to completely cross a tunnel which is four times as long as the previous tunnel. Now if it is a four times as long as the previous tunnel, so it is nothing but 12 meters and the train is let's say here, so which is two meters. So total distance the train has to cover to cross the tunnel is 12 meter plus this two meter which is nothing but 14 meter, right? So in the initial case the train has to travel five meters to cross the tunnel. In this case the train has to travel 14 meters to cross the tunnel. Now it is said that 5 meter the train travels in 25 seconds. So 1 meter in 25 by 5 seconds in 14 meter that is 14 into 25 upon 5. So your answer is 70 seconds. So hence your answer is 70 seconds which is 4 times as long as this. Now think about this question, the engine of a train was exactly middle tunnel which is thrice as long as the train that is completely emerged from the tunnel after 25 seconds. How much time will the train to completely cross the tunnel which is 4 times as long as the previous tunnel. So if it is 4 times, this is 3 into 4 is like 6. So this is not exactly 12 meter, uh, this is 24 meter because the length of the tunnel is 6 meter. So just changing this thing as 6 into 4 is 24 meter. So make it is 24 meter. So now if it is 24 meter. So in this case, I'll change a little bit the calculation because I have taken it as a 12 meters. So it is 12, 24 meters. So the, how much the train has to cover to like cross the entire tunnel? That is 24 plus 2, which is nothing but 26 meters. So the train has to cover 26 meters exactly. So again, 20, again, 5 meter has been covered in 25 seconds. So 26 meters would have been covered 25 upon 5 into 26, which is 130 seconds. So how much time the train will cover the entire tunnel? That is 130 seconds, right? So the answer is 130 seconds, which is option B. So this is how we can solve this type of question. Let's go for the next question. Now think about this question. Pravin goes from Mumbai to Pune at a speed of 40 and comes back at a speed of 60, taking exactly the same path. Find the average speed of the train. Now this question is based on average speed, right? So before we are going for average speed, I'll solve this question without even using average speed. Then we'll discuss how average speed works in the next video. So think about Pravin grows from Mumbai to Pune at a speed of 40 km per hour and back at 60 km per hour, right? So this is 40 kmph. This is 60 kmph, clear? So now think about the distance is D, let's say. The distance is D. Right, or you can take the distance as not D, 40, 60 LCM, 120 km. Right, so when he's going in this direction, this is 3 hours. When he's coming in this direction, it is basically 2 hours. So I can say, while going from Mumbai to Pune, it takes Pravin 3 hours. While coming back from Pune to Mumbai, it takes 2 hours. So what's the total time taken? The total time taken is 3 plus 2, which is 5 hours. The total time taken is 5 hours. Now think interestingly one thing, like the total time is 5 hours and what's the total distance covered? The total distance covered is nothing but 120 into 2, which is 240. So what should be the average speed? That is total distance by total time, which is nothing but 48. So I can say 48 kilometers per hour, the average speed. So in the next video, we will actually learn about average speed and we will learn how exactly average speed can help me to solve these questions very fast, not even doing like this. So remember, please keep practicing and this is how exactly we keep forwarding with time speed distance. So see you guys in the next video. Keep practicing and keep doing good work. Thank you.